Binko did this already, sir. Uh, no, this, this is different. Uh, this is an update about the Rafal, uh, and this is a follow up of the complete coverage that we did a couple of years ago. I wasn't here two years ago. Uh, yeah, I know, but don't worry, it is a decent series anyway. That is hard to believe, sir. <laughs> A couple of years ago we had a series about the Rafale and it was quite an exhaustive one. And if you have never seen it, I suggest you to do so. Link above and below. In the last two years though there have been quite a lot of news about this aircraft for various reasons. There has been a sudden commercial success, there is one variant almost ready to enter production and another one planned, and there is a super Rafale at the horizon. So let's get started. I interrupt M7 for a service communication, please watch till the end and click on the videos suggested there. This is a great way to support the channel, even better than subscribing. Please do it. I need AC power, and with the current energy prices. I risk starvation. Yeah, robots. Humans. L'Armée de l'Air de l'Espace currently deploys 96 Rafales and the Aeronaval has 48 more. With the new F-4 variant behind the corner, there are 28 more aircraft on order and probably more in the future. However, there will soon be many more Rafale in service outside France than in France. Egypt has operated the Rafale since 2015 and by 2026 it will have 66 units in service. Qatar has operated the Rafale since 2019 and soon it will have 36 aircraft in service. Greece in the aftermath of the rising hostility with Turkey has ordered 24 Rafales part of them second-hand, and the first lot was delivered in January 2022. Croatia has ordered 12 second-hand Rafales. Serbia seems to be very close to ordering 12 or 14 Rafales too. The Croatian aircraft will be F3R, the Serbian aircraft will likely be F4, but Rafale in Serbia? Rafale in Croatia? This is going to be interesting. The United Arab Emirates has signed a contract in December 2021 for 80 Rafales. So they will become the largest operator outside France. And finally, Indonesia ordered six Rafales with an option that anyway seems to be certain of 36 more. He purposely left India aside because he is not covering Indian news due to the persistent bad temper of Indian and Pakistani viewers. India has 36 modified Rafales in service. Yes, they often call it Rafael. There is no single reason why the Rafale has become a commercial success practically overnight. Of course the aircraft is an extremely competitive proposition, but so are the F-35 or the Sukhoi 35 or even the Sukhoi 57. I'm just naming a few competitors. Though, unlike the F-35 and the Russian jets, the Rafale sits in a sweet spot from different points of view. In terms of performance, it smokes the F-35 in every area. But it is obviously not a very low observability aircraft. The French say it is a demi furtif aircraft, but it is in no way comparable to the F-35. Regarding network-centric and information processing capabilities, it is probably the second best aircraft in the world after the F-35. Sensor fusion and networking were a reality on the Rafale years before it started working properly on the F-35. The Electronic Warfare Spectra suit is probably one of the best in the world, if not the best, to the point that the French Air Force, when the French government proposed to 
introduce an electronic warfare variant of the Rafale said, no, thank you, we don't need it. The standard Rafale is good enough. The aircraft cost is quite high, but this is because the customers tend to acquire a complete package including weapons and services. And honestly, France can offer a quite interesting package. More about this later. However, being an extremely solid commercial proposition is not enough to explain the commercial success. In fact, the American competition pretty much self-sabotage themselves through the ITA regulation that place a uh, some severe limitation to the military hardware that can be exported in some countries. In fact, the United States have become quite fussy about the export of high-end technology. They got to the point of denying access to the F-35 technology to their best allies and the aircraft is riddled with anti-tamper mechanisms. There are some American components in the Rafale, but they are pretty generic stuff, pretty generic chips or uh, nothing really high-tech, so they are not covered by the ITA regulations. This is not true though for some of the French weapons. For example, Egypt could not acquire the Scalp EG cruise missile. However, the French have learned the lesson and they are progressively removing all the American components from their products. If this was not enough, the American CATS legislation of 2017 is also basically placing automatic sanctions on all those countries that buy Russian weapons. This kind of pressure has been effective on Egypt and Indonesia, at least, in both cases, breaking deals already made with Russia. The French are way less fussy about sharing technology and they have an extremely valid offer of weapons and sensors. They are open and available to integrate new weapons and make changes to suit the local needs of the customer. And the French economy is large enough to guarantee industrial compensations and financial support. The nail in the coffin, though, is that unlike the F-35, the Rafale is completely independent from the American intelligence apparatus. It doesn't need the American threat libraries or all the other informations, updates, service packs that are required to make the F-35 fly and fight. The French are happy to share with the customers what could be useful to them. Probably not about their own stuff, but everything else, no problem. The current Rafale variant is the F3, but the F4 is basically ready to enter production. All the aircraft built from 2023 onwards will be F4s. However, l'Armée de l'Air and the Aeronaval are going to update all the existing Rafale to the F4 standard. The current French orders are split in two lots. 28 aircraft of the F4.1 variant from 2023 to 2025. Then 30 more aircraft of the F4.2 variant from 2026 onwards. Coming to the upgrades, the RBE2 is a radar will receive new modes, particularly new air to ground modes. The already advanced Damocles targeting pod is going to be replaced by the Telios pod, which is probably is one of the most complete and advanced and versatile T-pods in service today. And it is also quite expensive. Communications and connectivity will transit integrally on software-defined radios, like on the F-35. There have been discussions about installing a model terminal on the Rafale, but we don't know if this is going to happen anytime soon. The Spectra Suite will be upgraded too, we don't know obviously how, but we know that the output power of the jammers is going to increase. The aircraft systems will also receive upgrades to simplify the future updates of said systems, and they will also be useful to integrate the future versions of the Scalp EG missile and the Nuclear Strike ASMP missile. About the F5 variant, we don't know much. The design is just starting. The focus is expected to be on interoperability and first entry capability, as the French call it. 
Better interoperability will probably simply mean that the aircraft is going to adopt a wider range of data links and waveforms than today. The first entry capability refers to the capability of actually operating in contested airspace when the air defenses are not suppressed, or at least not yet. The F-35 or the F-22 do this with stealth. The Rafale will probably apply some new low observability measures and it will mix them with some active electronic countermeasures. The design stage of the F-5 variant is going to start in 2023 and the first deliveries are expected within the end of the decade. If CAS project is stalling, it made some headway in 2021 at the beginning of 2022, but now the divergence between Airbus and RAF is increasing and their respective governments are backing them. The FCAS, or uh, SCAF in French, is the new sixth generation aircraft being designed jointly by France, Germany and Spain. Or at least this is the theory. Yes, because it seems more and more unlikely that the project is going to proceed. I won't get into the reasons that probably sit on both sides, but this has an implication. If the project should be definitively cancelled, then an alternative is required. The Rafale is an excellent platform, but is getting old, and the time of start thinking to a replacement, well, is already overdue. One of the Dassault proposals is the Super Rafale, an aircraft that stays to the Rafale as the Super Hornet stays to the Legacy Hornet. Since we are still in the conceptual stage, we don't know any detail we can easily imagine that the aircraft will be larger, with an improved engine. It will integrate some more low observability measures to reduce the RCS. And it will likely leverage the F5 package of improvements. It is even possible that if the Super Rafale gets the green light, there won't be any F5 variant and they will go directly toward this Super Rafale. Obviously, to be somehow competitive with the 5th and 6th generation aircraft, it will need to add the capability of controlling drones and UCAVs and the capability to fly optionally manned. It's hard to think that it's going to be a full 6th generation aircraft, but it could be a viable interim solution. So far we only have discussed the events of the last couple of years, but if you really want to dive deep into all the features of the Rafale, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. Otis will be very disappointed if you don't do it. So if you like this video, please like, dislike, subscribe or hit the bell so you won't miss anything. Thank you very much to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member. I will never thank you enough. You can also support the channel by buying an aircraft model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage to no extra cost to you. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and see you there. I'm